we fall to our highest level of preparation. And weary traveler, I think you have come to the right place if you are looking to get started with tags and just organizing your notes and have a structure to organize your notes because structure is earned. We know this. We know that a good structure allows you to log information easily and it allows you to retrieve information easily, which allows you to digest information easily. So we come back to our original structure, the LogReadies structure, which stands again for log, relate, and discover. Logging is the first part of it. Relating is what happens within your PKM of choice, and discover is your output. It is the things that is cultivated, that is digested into your system. You discover new ideas, which you then give forth to the rest of the world. So, how do we make this work? Can LogReduce work by itself? Can you just log things and hope it goes to the right place? Or do you need to think about it? Do you need to consciously think about where this should end up? If you think about keys, as soon as you get back to your house, you want to put your keys at the exact same place, and I'm guilty of not always doing it. But if you know where a certain object should go, where you want to find it when you're looking for it in the future, you'll leave it at the same place. Tags is that place where you leave your keys. It is a structure which allows your mind to free up resources. You outsource that resource. So we want in our logree system something that is compatible with it, something that works with it, because without a tag structure, none of this works. So you are uncertain of how to start with a tag structure. And this video is going to run through how you should think of tags, how you could use it, and how you should apply this into your own PKM of choice or PKM note-taking system of choice. So let's go through the list of things that we want to run through today. We want to run through our daily, weekly, and monthly because I'm a big advocate of the daily notes first system, which you have a central point each day, which is the first page you open up every single day to have a timeline of events. You don't need to capture everything on this one page. You can capture it wherever you deem this information should be. But the main point is, it doesn't matter where you place this information because the tag structure allows it to be siphoned into the correct area for future you to find it easily. So daily, weekly, and monthly, because I'm an advocate for it. I'm going to talk through the tags that I use in my daily notes, my weekly notes, monthly notes. Next one is tasks, appointments, and event management, which I've been playing around with lately. And I'm going to give you a sneak preview of how I use it. Income and expenses, if you're interested in being a little bit more aware of where your money goes to and comes from. Then cooking and baking, one of my passions, which I really enjoy. It gives me the feeling that I'm doing meditation while I'm doing it and I bring joy to other people. The is tag experiences and exercise, if you want to keep track of cool places that you've gone to. If you're traveling a lot, you want to remember places to recommend to other people or just places that you don't want to forget. Chatting and talking with people. This is one of the major categories which I have found tremendous help in just remembering information about people in my life that is important to me, whether it's family members or old school friends, or if it's new people that I want to bring into my life, I want to retain knowledge that they give me so I can engage with them in the future with regards to their interests. I want to be able to track information of, hey, this person really likes this type of flower. I can use this information in the future, not as a manipulation tactic, but more as a thoughtful action that I can give back to them and say, hey, I remember what you said. I remember what you value in this life. I remembered when you told me that this specific flower brought you joy. And when I want to show my appreciation, I can 
give them that specific flower that was only mentioned once. The on tags just breaks down different categories of where your logs should go to. And you can have multiple on tags for a specific log or a specific page, like a permanent note. Movies and series, if you are inclined to track everything that you watch, everything that you consume, also just information on the movies and series. And then a little bit more personal to me, YouTube and blogs. So this is the structure that we're going to go through. I'm going to have different timestamps. If this gives you value, please stay tuned, watch everything because every little bit is going to give you a new idea, new insight that you can use and adapt to your specific needs, or just jump to the correct timestamp of the thing that you are working with now. So fam dam, let's jump into it. So we are back at our demo vault, the daily notes first and not these demo vaults of the previous video. And we're going to go through the tag structure from the top to the bottom. So if you go to the tag structure, which can, if you have the demo vaults, if you have the means to pay for it, you can go to the tag structure. With templates, we also need to use a tag structure. So this note, we run through exactly the, the same points. And the first thing that we're going to look at is log morning review, log daily review, log weekly review, log monthly review. So for the daily, weekly, and monthly notes, that is where we want to indicate our different reviews that we're pulling into the weekly slash monthly slash yearly notes. And it's quite simple. And I'm going to use the 9th of April to 15th of April for this video as exercises. So for the 9th, if we go to the daily note, you can see that obviously we started a day off with some pictures and here we have our first morning review. Started a day off with a sunshine and learning about uh, Leo Pluridon. It's really a fascinating creature. And this could be anything that you've done in the morning. You could give a brief summary of how your sleep was. You can just give a general feeling of how you're feeling in the morning. It's as soon as you wake up, the first thing that you get to, the first thing that you fall in your obsidian. This hashtag log morning review, it just indicates that cool, this is a morning review. And if we are interested to see how we feel throughout the mornings, then we can create a data view query to just pulls in this tag with log morning review. Next one on our daily page is the day I did a deep dive into fascinating creature called Leo Pluridon. And the evening review is also just a place where you give a summary of the biggest things that happened in your day, the things that stood out the most, big milestones in your life, in your career, in your relationships, anything that made you feel happy or sad, any takeaways, new things that you've learned, you just give a nice little summary and tell yourself what you've done well, what you could have done better. And this specific tag gets pulled into our weekly notes. So for the first two log morning review, log daily review, the daily review is pulled into the weekly and you can choose to do the same with the morning review. But in our case, or in this demo vault, we did not do that. So here we can see our log daily review got pulled into our weekly note, which is week 15. So this week at the top right. And when we scroll down past all the pictures of the week, we can see our review. You can see on our 9th, that's our daily review for all the other days. We also get it pulled in automatically. And for people who are interested, this is what the data view query looks like. If we scroll down to reviews, this is what pulls in our daily reviews from that specific week. So we have a data view, we pull in the tasks, and we just say where it contains the hashtag log daily review. The next one is log weekly review, and we are already here. And this is just a summary of how your week went. So this is something that you're going to come to at the end of your week, and you will start filling in it, filling it in here. So you'll look at your days. You can see cool, the day I did not. I did a deep dive the day I finally tamed my imaginary unicorn, the 
the day I went to a Rex Museum, you can see, cool, so was this a good week? Was this a bad week? What did I learn? Again, what was the biggest trophies? What was the biggest insights? What was the biggest failures of the week? Because we know that this weekly review at the bottom, that's going to be pulled into our monthly review. So we do a nice little condensing of daily notes and we sum everything up, take the main takeaways from it, and we put it here. You can even just highlight all of this. We go, highlight it, go to ChatGPT and say, here is my thoughts at the end of each day. Please summarize it in one sentence or one paragraph and give me all the main takeaways if you don't feel like writing it. Let's use ChatGPT to make our lives a little bit easier as well. So there's a little bit of a side tip. But let's give an example that if you want to rather type it out and have your own thoughts, just gonna go to your edit mode and we'll just close up and scroll down to our weekly reviews. So this again is the query that pulls in everything. And then here we'd say, this was an exciting week. I learned so much, drank a lot of Java, played some Dota and tamed a unicorn. Then you can give what went well, what didn't go well, tips and insights for future you, etc., etc. Because we know that this log weekly review in this tag this is going to be captured in our monthly notes, which is the one we're going to go to next. So if we go back to reading mode, let's just have a quick look what it looks like. You can see again our dailies, and then we can see our, our weekly this year. So let's scroll all the way to the top, and then we go to our months. And here we can see that we obviously haven't created the other week, so the pictures will not appear because my only example is the top right just did it for one week as an example. So now we can see that in our monthly notes, which in the current note that we are in is for April, we can see that for the only week that we have created so far, so if you create the other weeks, it would also be populated here. You can see that it pulled in correctly, and then you can do the same for the log monthly review. So this code for the review looks something like this. We just have a data view query task where it contains the lower case of text, hashtag log weekly review. So it, it goes to your weekly review note, and then it also just checks for the specific date range, which is end of the month and the start of this month. And then you'll retrieve all your reviews right here. And then we'll do the same for the log monthly review, which is this is a monthly review for the months of April 2023. And then again, you'll give all your main takeaways for this month so that at the end of the year, you can create your yearly notes and then you have 12 summaries, which should be an accurate representation of how your year went. Next on our to-do list is tasks, appointments, and event management. I'm busy making a video where we will incorporate some calendar functionality and how to space time or visualize it within the calendar or a calendar plugin. But for now, tasks works as follows, and you can use the same type of tasks structure for appointments and events. So. We use the task obsidian plugin with a specific hashtag. The hashtag that we use for tasks is the hashtag task. So you can use whatever further definitions you want and you can create your data view queries from there. And I'll tell you where to specify your specific tags. But if something is a task, meaning you want to check it off, that is when you are going to hashtag task and then dash whatever type of task it is. So I made a couple examples. Task personal admin. 
Tosk Client Admin, Tosk Internal Company Admin, Tosk Creative YouTube Recording. But you always start with Tosk and then it's personal. Tosk Career, Tosk whatever. You can create your own structure, but you always use the Tosk. And then you can go to a specific page that will break down all the tasks throughout your vault that you have recorded. And then you can start checking off tasks by a specific topic. So let's run with this example a little bit before we go to appointments, events. So the left-hand side, we created a bookmark. And the bookmark is something that comes with Obsidian. It's a new release, so you might just need to activate it, but I think it's activated by default. And we created personal tasks and career tasks pages. So for personal tasks, that would be anything related to personal matters. Let's say I want to go shopping. I can create a task anywhere within my vault. I can put a timestamp of when I need to go do shopping by, and it will be pulled through here. And we have two sections, which is to do and completed. So let's go through an example. So in my example week, we're going to go to the ninth. And under log, I'm going to say, hey, I just remembered I need to clean my exhaust. And this is a task and it's personal. And then I can have more clarifications. If it's personal related to the car, I can say car. So you can see how you can expand it and you can create more and you can create a data query that specifies or filters through on both hashtags. Let's say this is also a task related to work because it's a work car, but yeah, you can see how you can play around with it. Let's just go with task personal and we'll keep it there. And let's make another task, go do shopping buy chicken, eggs, and salad. And this is task, personal, groceries. And let's say I want to do this, I remember, on the 9th, that I want to do this shopping on the 12th, but I don't want to go to the 12th to add this to my tasks and to-do list. I want the functionality to add tasks wherever and whenever I think about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that day, which is 04, and it is, let's say, Tuesday the 12th. And that's all I need to do. The car exhaust, let's say I need to do it tomorrow. I have an appointment or something. So let's do it 04 and that is the 10th. So if we go to viewing mode, we can see on the log, we have logged just two tasks that we thought of during the day. Go do shopping, buy chicken, eggs and salad. Cool, and we can see. Okay, so where do we find these tasks again? We can either go to our daily note. So let's say we wake up tomorrow, we open up our Obsidian and we create this new daily note. Under the task log, we have a query that pulls in all the tasks that is specified with today's date. So here we can see I need to go clean my exhaust and we can see what date was specified for. And then in brackets, you can see which day or note it comes from. And this code looks like this. Tasks not done, sort by path reverse, that's just to get the order out. And description includes this day, which this is just a template of code, which automatically fills that in. And the description includes tasks, events, or appointments. So we're not just looking for tasks, we're looking for any events that we might have hashtagged or appointments that we might have hashtagged. So you can see it's quite flexible. And when we go back, we don't just want to, by chance, find it on a specific day. Let's say, I remember I have a task or event or appointment that I need to go to. Do I want to go through all the notes to search for it? No, I can just go to the left hand side and I can go to personal tasks under the bookmarks, which I just created a new folder. And then I placed these notes underneath it. And how to place notes under specific, you can think of it as a folder in your bookmarks, is let's say this personal tasks to do. 
you want to add it to the bookmark pane and the bookmark pane is just there for easy access. And I find it quite valuable just to have it there, but I also use the bookmarks for other things, which is notes that I don't necessarily always want to keep around, but we'll get to that later. For now, this is just an easy way to access notes that I use a lot. And the way to add it, just right click on a specific note and you say add bookmark. Here it says edit bookmark because it's already part. And then this little dialog box would pop up where you can say, okay, what is my title going to be? So you can change the name, which won't change the notes name. And then you can specify the folder in the bookmarks pane where you want it under. And we have a folder called tasks, appointments, and events. Okay. So now that we have it there, we can see that our to-do pops up here. We have our to-do of task personal. So we can see our tasks that we need to do. And we do see that our other task doesn't pop up. So that's probably because we've misspelled it. So let's go back to the ninth and task person, personal. So we fixed it to be task personal and if we go back it should pop up there and you can choose if you want the functionality to have the completed logs pulled through so i need my cleaning source i finished it great and then it should pop up here with completion date so it's a nice easy way to go through your tasks and check them off and see your completed tasks as well so that's it for the the tasks functionality the events and if we just go back to the tag structure, we can see that you can specify it however you like. I like to do hashtag tasks only for tasks. If it's a note or a log or interesting fact that somebody has about task management, then you would have hashtag on dash task. But if it's a task, something that you need to check off and get done, then it's a hashtag tasks, and then you have a dash. The same thing for appointment. Let's say you have a haircut. It works exactly the same way. So we don't need to run through it again. Appointment driver license, appointment dash lesson, events, events also the same thing. It's something that you suddenly think of. I remember I have an event two weeks from now. Let me just quickly note it down so that I have it in my system. Whenever you want to be reminded, you can go to the events page on the left hand side. And you can see here's all the events that I have ever created. And once the event is done, you can check it off or you can just keep it there. Doesn't really matter. You just need to think how you want to structure it. Same thing for appointments. So this is the it's a quite simplistic structure, but I found simplicity is key when it comes to tasks, because as soon as there's more functionality with built out task management apps, it gets quite complex. So something as simple as this works quite well. And you can think of different projects that you have. You can add bookmarks for specific projects because you know, eventually the project will be completed and you want to move it away. So you can have a new folder on a temporary project and after it's done you delete that bookmark because you have checked off all the items so it's quite flexible and yep yeah, that is it for the tasks appointments and events the daily habits is a little bit of a one that i'm still playing around with that i might change but essentially if we go to a specific day's note you can see that we have some tasks that you can, and I would recommend that if you want to build daily habits and you don't want to fill in these daily tasks each and every time, just go to your templates and add reading, morning walk, guitar practice, for instance, if you know it's something that you're going to want to do every day. And then you can create a bookmark page or just a normal page that pulls in queries related to on daily habit reading, but it should be task <laughs> does not really matter i'm still trying to figure this one out if you guys have a good structure to go on let me know it's a new day the sun is shining outside that's why we switch from dark mode to light mode and the next topic is income and expenses so this is a section 
where if you are interested in being more savvy with your money, this is the structure that you can use in order to log expenses and income. Expenses and income, the idea is that you capture everything that comes in and goes out. So most of us get notifications on our phone when a new expense occurs or an income comes in to your bank. The idea is to immediately just use the structure in order to capture that, that at the end of the week, month, or just overall, you can see where you are spending your money. So just a better way to track it. I am investigating ways in order to automate some of this because APIs are quite easily created these days and we can create a link to where we get our income from or our where our money goes. So when you go to a grocery store, it's normally tagged with a specific name so we can automate it, but that will be a little bit further down the road. So for now, let's go through a couple examples. Again, we're going back to our 15th week in April, the 9th to the 15th, and let's go to the 10th this time. So we are on the 10th of April and we go to the grocery store. We go to our log section where we log everything and we're just going to create a new task and we're going to say Alt E in order to access our templates. And the template that we're going to access is expense. And we can see we already have a log expense groceries. And I'll show you what it looks like in a second, but it gives you this little one line template. And it's a, we spent 69 euros on groceries. You can indicate that it was at Albert Hein in the Netherlands. And you can then quickly say what you bought, or you can add a picture here of your expenses, picture here of your slip or something like that. You can say, I bought ingredients for lasagna in the mood for pasta. Also bought carrots and 100% dark chocolate or chocolate. So this is one expense. And we can see that we have it as a log expense groceries. We have these little icons. If you don't like it, you can go change it. But essentially what the template looks like, if we open it up, we can see it is log expense and groceries. This is the template. We have this little template of code which just takes your cursor to that first position as soon as you create it. And then you can click Alt A in order to go to the next cursor location. So let's, let's say you forgot to buy canned tomatoes and you go back to the store. So then you just add another task and you say Alt E in order to access the templates again. You can type in groceries this time and it should pop up, log expense groceries and it was five euros. I press Alt A in order to jump to the second cursor location and just say Albert Hein. So if you know you're going to go to a specific shop each time when you go buy groceries, you can fill this, the name of the shop in the template as well. But I just kept it as blank because I don't know what shops you go to. You can say, I went back to buy canned tomatoes or tomatoes for my lasagna. So now we have these expenses. At the end of the month, we obviously want to see all our expenses and income. So let's go to our weekly note first to see how it's populated there. So we go to the calendar, we click on that specific week and let's go to reading mode. You can see the normal, we have our graphs, we have our pictures, and then it's under review. So we scroll all the way down to where we see income and expenses. We can see we haven't logged any income yet, but our expenses are being popped up here. So you can see, cool. For the pictures, it there's still some limitations in the sense of if you want to show the picture, it won't necessarily pop up here 
but you can just reference the picture in your system and you can click on the picture or just hover over it and it will show, but the picture won't pop up here, but the code to the picture will pop up here. And we can see that we spent 69 euros and five euros. Great. So now let's go to, let's say the 15th when we are paid. We go to log and then we say, cool, you have log income, salary, and let's say 6969, 69. And you have your company name here and it's automatically log income salary, which is great and say, this was a bonus month. And now if we go back to our weekly, let's just open another one and go back to our calendar and click on 15th and then scroll all the way down to reviews, you can see that our income is also logged there. So it's a nice little way to see what you spent money on in the week. And I'm still working on data view queries in order to tally up your total monthly expenses. But you can also see that you can drill down in a specific data view on specific expenses or income that you want to see. So we also have a note called income and expenses, which is exactly the same code. And you can see that it would also pop up here. And you can see there's no time frame attached like there is for the weekly. So the weekly and the week of the 15th, this is the code that it uses. It uses this date, which is specified at the top of our weekly note, meaning this date. So from the ninth, and then it takes that date plus six days and it creates the range of only that week. So we will only see income and expenses for that week. When we go to income and expenses, there's no time frame attached, which means all your income and expenses will just be populated there. And then you just need to sort them from most recent to the furthest away time frame. So now we want to go check our monthly note. So what we do is we can go to our monthly note and it would be 23 or four. And if we go to reading mode, we can see that cool. Our monthly note, all our days, our pictures are here. You can see we only filled in for the week of the 15th, but in the calendar, if we fold in the other weeks, it will populate here as well. So just close the pictures and we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom again for expenses and income. So this is the expense that I just need to take out quickly. So this one should not be it because it's part of income and expenses. And now if we go back to reading mode, we can see that this is all our income and expenses for the entire month. So obviously we only have three entries and it was all in the week of the 15th, but you can see the days that it's attached to. So the idea is that at the end of the month, if you logged everything properly, then you can just come through and see, okay, where was my biggest expenses? So to make it a little bit more concrete, let's go through another example. Let's say on the 13th, you got an expense related to Netflix and you'll go alt e and log expense you can see we don't have expense for netflix yet but you can create one it will be similar to the log expense coffee we will just say log expense netflix or log expense entertainment for instance so a log expense you can say that let's say it's 10 euros and you can put it here as log expense and let's go for entertainment and Netflix, something like that. So you can choose which structure you want to use, but that way you can filter on log expense entertainment instead of just log expense. And then you can see, well, how much money am I spending on entertainment? So HBO, Netflix, all of those good little things or uh, things that brings us a little bit more pleasure but you can also use the same expense, which we'll go through an example for household expenses like internet, your monthly rent, all of that. So let's just say a monthly Netflix expense. And let's go through an example of rent, for instance. So log expense, we'll say rent was 500 euros, for instance. You can go log expense rent 
and then monthly rental cost. And let's go for Wi-Fi cost, blog expense. So that was 80 euros, blog expense, Wi-Fi or internet, for instance. And you can make it even more concrete to say log expense household rent and log expense household internet so that you can filter down to log expense household and then you'll capture all the rent, internet, uh, cleaning supplies, all of those things that you can filter on it. So let's stick with log expense household. And if we go back to our tag structure, we might get more insights into how to actually use it. Scroll to income and expenses. And here we can see that we have a couple of examples, log expense subscription, log expense subscription, log expense subscription. So here we actually have, hey, all the subscriptions, so you can filter down subscriptions as well. But you can always use multiple hashtags. So if you want to still be able to filter down on all your subscriptions, you can add double hashtags. So let's use that example in this log. So for log expense entertainment, Netflix, you want to be able to filter on entertainment, but you also want to filter on all your subscriptions and you go log expense subscription, and then you can go on entertainment. So that way you can filter through more variations. Again, this is going to have to be adapted to your needs. You can see there's a little bit of overlap, but once you figure out something that works for you, stick with it or play around with it. You can always change it later. Just remember when you do change or you do mass replace, and I have a video on it, remember, please remember to save your files first. I know of a lot of people who gone through the file and replace and then make a small mistake and they lost everything. So please remember whenever you do a mass file and replace, always save your work first. You don't want to, you don't want to realize that you've done something wrong and lose months or years worth of data. Just be, be very careful whenever you want to file and replace things. So log expense entertainment, log expense subscription. So you can add multiple hashtags and then you can just add it to the data view. And then log euros, log expense, household internet. And you can say this was for internet. And now if we go back to our weekly and we scroll all the way down, we can see that hey, there's all our expenses. We had expenses on the 10th and we had expenses on the 13th. And we still only have one income. And if we go back to our monthly, so if I just scroll all the way to the top, I can go to the monthly up and then scroll all the way down. It should look exactly the same, but this time period is just going to capture everything in the month of April. And then if you want to see all your expenses together without time frames, you will go to your bookmarks, add it to your bookmarks, and you'll go to income expenses essentially. And again, this is the data view query that you use. Income, expenses. This is across all time periods within your vault. And you can always add conditions. So let's say you want log expenses, which you can see all the expenses going to pop up here. But let's say you only want to see log expense subscriptions. And then you'll only see the expenses related to subscriptions but you can always stack them. So if you want to stack hashtags, let's say you want to see subscriptions and it's entertainment, then you can just go and contains, you copy this little piece and you say, and log expense entertainment, for instance. Then you have a double condition. Let's say you want to see either or, then you can just change it to or, and then it would capture everything. So that is a way that you can tailor your data view queries to exactly what you want to see. In order to add income and expenses, something that you might just quickly want to come back to and see, okay, where have I been spending? Where have I been receiving income? You can 
right click on it and take it to the bookmarks. So again, edit bookmark it would in your case, if you haven't added to a bookmark, it would say add bookmark. Then the path remains the same. You can change the title, which does not affect the actual note title. And you can click save, or you can add it to a specific folder. What I mean by folder for our previous tag was tasks, appointments, and events. We added a folder, which you can add here at the top, new bookmark group. But in our case, we only have income and expenses, but if you have different income and expenses groups that you want to see, you just add another note. And this might be a good example to use with relation to the bookmark capabilities. So let's go through an example. Let's say we want to see all our income and expenses, but then we also just want to see expenses related to groceries. So let's say we're going to copy this and we're going to say this is expenses groceries. We're going to say log expense grocery grocery. Just make sure that that is the case. Log expense groceries. Just remember to spell it correctly because otherwise it won't get picked up. Let's test it and we see cool. It brings back all expenses related to groceries, but now we want to add it to our bookmark because we want to easily see it. Now what we can do is we can highlight it, right click, bookmark this heading, and we can say grocery expenses, which again, it does not change the note name. It only gives a bookmark name to that page. So it's two separate things, but you can rename it, which is pretty cool. And we're not going to add it to a group just yet because I'm going to delete it. I just want to show you the capabilities of it. So click save. And now we see there's an H, which means it's a specific heading within a note. And it's only going to show that heading. So if you go back, it does not necessarily just show that heading. So that's a little bit of a limitation, but it's fun because let's say you have the tax structure. I'm like, oh, I want to check how much money I've been spending on groceries. What it does is it takes you to that heading immediately. Now you can see, okay, cool. So it still takes you to a page, but it immediately just transports you to that section, which I think is still quite cool. So that should give you an idea of how you can use bookmarks. So I'm just going to delete this and stick with income and expenses. And I'll keep this in as an example. Okay. So that is it for income and expenses. Next up is cooking and baking. And this is going to be ingredients that is going to overlap with some of the other tags a little bit. And we're also going to move more towards the permanent notes side of things. But you know, we have cooking, we have baking and ingredients. And then we also have trying out a recipe. So this is a specific recipe that you are trying out or that you're actually making. So to give an example, let's go to the 11th and we'll go to our log. And let's say we come across a recipe that we want to try out. I'm gonna say log and is video because we found it on YouTube. Then we have something like this. So we have the tag, we have this little camera to show that it's a video, where we're getting it from. It is a video. What I like to do is I like to say YouTube, say it's coming from YouTube. And then over here, I'll like to put control K or type in control K in order to insert the link. And I'm gonna call this recipe the ultimate lasagna. So the ultimate lasagna's web address would be this guy. And we'll just take the top, copy it, and then go back and then we'll paste it inside. So now that we have, just make sure you paste just the URL. So right click, paste this plain text. Then you have the link to the recipe, then Alt A to go to the next cursor location. We can say this is recipe lasagna. Okay. And it's about how this video is about how to make the best lasagna. 
And let's say you want to make a permanent note of this log. So imagine that this log on the 11th of April, you came across this idea, you don't have time to create a permanent note, but you want to keep it here for later. And you can create a demo name for it so long that when you come back to it, you can just press on it and create it. So let's say we've logged it and it looks like this, but now we actually want to create it. So the ultimate lasagna. So let's create it. I'm gonna go Alt A and note template and the tags is going to be recipe lasagna hashtag. Uh, let's go back to our tag structure just to make sure. So when you go to cooking, okay, so it's going to be Italian and it's going to be Italian lasagna. So let's take that. Cooking recipe Italian lasagna. Great. So you can put as many hashtags as you want. This is going to be the main one that you can filter on. And then you can also have ingredients, which would be ground beef ingredients, just to show that it's the main ingredients. Lasagna sheets, for instance. So now that we have something that we're going to filter up on, the parent one is going to be just the cooking page when you want to create it. And then here you will have the actual video embedded or the link to it as well. So let's just say this is a link and we go back to the YouTube video and make sure you only copy or paste the URL. So now that you have the link and you can go to ingredients and you can have beef, mince, cheese, lasagna, canned tomatoes, salt, pepper, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then you will actually have the recipe. Step one, cook the mince. Step two, enjoy, for instance. So this is our permanent note. And this is where we will always come back to in order to reassess how we create this recipe. And then at the end, we can have a log as well. So then we can also add a log at the end, which on this ultimate lasagna page, we can see all the mentions of task logs that we created. So for instance, the first log that we mentioned this note, the ultimate lasagna, we want to see when we first got introduced to this recipe. And with this data view query, it returns that specific log. So we can see on the 11th, we had this video about how to make the best lasagna, ultimate lasagna. And let's say it is two days later. So we're going to the 13th and we actually managed to make it. So now we're going to go with, I made the, the ultimate lasagna. So you mention the actual permanent note in your log and you go hashtag log cooking to indicate that you did log it and you can go a little bit further Italian pasta lasagna you can go as deep as you want and then you can give your experiences about it so let's say really easy recipe to follow along with multiple meats remember to buy good quality cheese. So now we just had a log, which we can then go to our weekly note, and monthly note to see what we actually made. And we can also go back to the permanent note and see our experiences with it. So you can see on the 13th, I made the ultimate lasagna. And here's my experiences. So you have a type of record to see when you made what. Our next step would then be to see or know what we cooked or baked during the week. And if we go to the 13th, where we actually logged it, we can see I made the ultimate lasagna and the log cooking is what will be picked up in our weekly. So we go to the 15th 
and we can scroll down all the way to cooking and baking. It gets tracked here as well for the month, sorry, for the week. And then this would also be carried through to the month. The data view behind us looks something like this. Do, 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 cooking and baking. So we have a data view task where it contains the lowercase of text log cooking. And then we just have the date range as well. And then for this ultimate lasagna for the permanent pages, you can obviously create an MOC or a MOC, which you pull the different recipes into your page through different classifications. So let's say you want a section in your cooking MOC for Italian dishes, for Asian dishes, for whatever dishes you want, you can create a data view quite easily by just pulling in the permanent note based off these tags. So this works exactly the same for baking. So I think we can stop there. Let's go back to our tag structure, see if there's anything that we're missing. And there's a couple examples on baking on how you can also stack the hashtags. So let's say you have a hashtag called baking recipe French. So French baking. But then you also want to indicate that it's belay because you might have different belay recipes. So you can stack them and then also use a data view query to pull through the logs or to pull through the permanent notes to MSC. Then the ingredients we went through, you can specify as many ingredients. I was just playing around with the thoughts of having a page for each ingredient, and then you can link up ingredients to specific recipes. And then the idea was that you can then mention in a data view query all the ingredients that you have, and then based off those ingredients that you submit in data query, it's going to return back the recipes that requires those ingredients. And then trying out recipe is just what you do in your task log is log cooking, log baking. So that's it for cooking. If we go to the is tag, this is something that just specifies what something is. So we had an is video YouTube, is video Instagram. So we can see when we go back to the 13th where we just logged that recipe, we can see that we had a, sorry, that was the 11th that we logged. We can see that there was a hashtag is video YouTube. So it just specifies what it is, but there's multiple other is tags. So if you're pulling in a log from an article, a podcast, you can see that you can specify what it is because it's a little bit different from the on tag, which we'll get to in a little bit. But the on tag specify the subject matter where the is tag specifies that this is something, this is a book, this is a person, this is a genre. It's not on a genre, it's not about a genre, this is a genre. So if you log what you're watching, so TVs, series, movies, you can say, hey, this is something I've been watching. So Game of Thrones, it is genre fantasy, for instance. And here we have the, the cooking recipe again, the cooking example. So this is just something that you use with your tag structure or tag logs, log tags, your log entries. So this is just something you use in combination in order to filter through that in the future, when you remember, hey, I remember watching a recipe on YouTube, but I can't remember what the recipe was about. I can't remember what type of recipe it was. I only The only thing I remember is that I watch it on YouTube. This is another way for you to find it. Next, we have recommendations. So this is if somebody recommends a movie, book, or series. And this is also just to go through recommendations of you have a conversation with somebody and they say, listen, I know you and I know what you like. And this movie, and this movie is something that you would absolutely love. That is when you would have a, a structure similar to this. So let's go to a 12th and go through that example. So log chat with person. And our person is Elon Musk, because I think he's the only person in our vault. Is chat about hashtag is recommendation on recommendation recommendation. Let's just go back to our text structure. 
there we go. So this was not indicated by a hashtag. That's why it's not being picked up. So I'm just going to change this real quickly. And is movie recommendation, is book recommendation, is series recommendation. So now when we say is series recommendation, you recommended watching Game of Thrones. And then you can have a link to it as well. And uh, HTTPS, yeah. So now you have another way of finding movie recommendations or series recommendations. For this, you can just create another task data view query, which you just specify it with this hashtag. Or you can recommend, not recommend, you can remember that Elon Musk recommended the series to you. So now you can navigate to Elon Musk and go to reading mode. And now we can see chat with Elon Musk about two, 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 two. So yes, four, 10. So chat with Elon Musk about how he actually going to kill me. Two, two, two. Here we go. The 12th chat with Elon Musk about his series recommendation, Game of Thrones. And then you have the link here. So just again, multiple ways of finding things. So that is it for recommendations, then experiences and exercise. Same thing, you can log a gym exercise. So you can go through levels of granularity. So let's use an example of going to the gym. It's on the 13th. We head, let's go on the 14th. We head to the gym. So we can say, task log. Let's see if there's any gym recommendations here. So no, we don't have it yet. So we can just say, you can either create a template, which I'm not going to do now, but I'm just going to go through example. I went to the gym to train legs. And then this is a log exercise because you're logging it, exercise and gym. And then you can go a little bit further saying leg day something, legs. And here you can specify what you did. So a uh, hundred squats at 250 kilograms, a light weight day and jumping squats, squats, <laughs> jumping squats. And let's say hip thrusters. So now we can see what type of exercise we did. And I think we have an exercise log in our weekly. But if we don't, it might be a good exercise to go through it. So it's, we only have one day that we went to gym. So if we go to weekly, go to the bottom, if exercise is something that you want to see on a weekly basis and monthly basis, you can add it, but let's just take one of these, let's take cooking and baking. We go to the end and you can obviously add this to your template. And then you're just going to change the log cooking to log exercise. And now go to reading mode. We can see that it pops up. So let me just spell that correctly. And that's about it for exercise. Let's see if there's something else that we need to pay attention to. Exercise, the same thing for experiences it would work exactly the same way. You just specify a log of I went to a circus and if it's a specific circus or comedy club that you went to or movie that you went to watch, you can insert the link by control K uh, just to that specific log. And yeah, that's about it for logs. Then chatting with people, chatting and talking, you can put the hashtag is person in order to pull that also through to your weekly and monthly. We already went through the example with the Elon Musk. So Elon Musk is person chat, or you can say is person thoughts if you thought about it, but you didn't really speak to the person that it's all pulled through to Elon Musk. Or you can say is person person mention. So somebody else mentioned this person. You can play around with this. Then the on tags. On tags is where you say it's on a specific subject. So if we go to an example again, let's go to the 10th.
let's say log and we watched or listened to a podcast let me just take that out and we can say tim ferris number 456 and then you say https here is podcast and then you can say tim ferris podcast about then you would say on writing if it was on writing but they also touched on artificial intelligence on ai and they also spoke about cooking so it just shows the different things that they spoke about and then you can have he recommended certain techniques on how to write better and it's x y z then spoke about how ai might enter our minds in the next 24 hours and he talked about the best recipe ever for moose uh, let's go for creme so now we can see that we have a lot of information. We have the Tim Ferriss podcast, which is the podcast, and we have the classifications on writing. So now we can see that once we build enough gravity, meaning the if you go to a hashtag pane, you go to the on tag, and you go to, let's say, on AI, which would be here somewhere. So you can see there's two logs that we have that mentions AI. If this gets to, let's say, 3,000 or 200, whatever your number would be, you can see that there's a lot of gravity surrounding this note, and that might be the time to explore it and create a new MOC note. So with an MOC note, all that it is is, let's just create a new note, call this AI permanent note, Alt E, and then we're going to go MOC note template. So we have AI permanent note, and then we're going to look at our hashtag logs and outgoing logs, and let's just do this on AI. And let's do this on AI as well. And it needs to be lowercase. And something else, we need to close it down. So here's just two of the same thing. The first one just brings back a single log. So for this section is basically this query. So task description includes AI, which would only bring back one single log, but not the subsequent points. Or you can use this data view query, which goes through on AI, and then you can see the subsequent bullet points. So now you can work through all your logs and then you can start writing about what you've learned. And this is obviously from vastly different sources that you bring together at one place. You might learn about AI in a fiction book, which has a thought provoking idea that you want to capture, which relates to AI. And with all these sources, it's basically you, multiple hundreds of you running out throughout your lifetime, gathering certain subjects that you find interesting. And then eventually, once you've built up enough gravity, you can come back to it and you can say, cool, I have enough resources to start writing or creating whatever I want. So if you think about the log release system, let's just go to the log release note. The input is what we're talking about, how to capture them. Then we're logging them, which is the first element, the log, logging of inputs. Then we relate with the hashtags so we can see that the hashtags is showing which subjects, which subject matters it relates to, which areas it should be pushed towards or funneled to. And then discover is when you eventually come back and you see, hey, I have a lot of notes on AI. Let's start creating. So this is where you would start typing and putting all this information together and having a nice golden thread. Okay. Back to the tag structure, so that's on tags. 
movies and series, it's quite straightforward. It's just capturing your is movie, is movie Troy, is series, is series Game of Thrones, for instance. And an example would be I watch Death Note. The genre is anime, or you can say it is anime. It is a film or a movie. And then is genre thriller. And then just an example of different genres that you can get. So again, play around as you wish. And then the last one is more specific to me is just to indicate that something relates to content creation. So that would be on content creation for me, but you can say on personal project X or something like that. And then once a note is published, meaning I've published on YouTube or published my blog article, if it's a permanent note, I just put it in the tags. This is published. So that is it. That is it for the tag structure. Hope you found this valuable. If you did, I would really love for you to support me in my endeavors because if you buy me a coffee on Buy Me Coffee, it gives me a lot of motivation. Any feedback, any suggestions, because it's an ever-changing idea or realm to explore. There's no right or wrong way, but with your input, we can create something great. If you want all of these resources, I'll have a link to this demo vault, which again is the Logrides slash daily notes first system which i have everything i've ever spoken to in a condensed manner and easy enough to consume way with all of these examples so there'll be a link in the description if you have the means to buy it otherwise just pause at the different data queries and code that i use and recreate it by yourself all right strength and honor strength upon your family may the light illuminate you